acceptable Christian sin of gluttony, message number 70, a homily, if you will, number 70, slash Daniel Fast Encouragement, message number 6. The word acceptable is a positive word. The word Christian is definitely a positive word. But the next two words, sin and gluttony, are terrible words. Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. This is what they called him in the kingdom. And the thing was true, but the time thing was true but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision in those days I Sam I Daniel in those days I Daniel he's writing in the first person here was mourning three full weeks There are some things so troubling that they will make you fast. I believe that Daniel was in this state. Verse 3. Have you ever been so troubled? It didn't matter whether or not they gave you your favorite meal. Have you ever been so troubled, so burdened, so concerned about your people, your peeps, maybe family members, caught up with the wrong people, caught up with the wrong gang, and, and the wrong gang can mean not only a gang on the street, but a gang on Wall Street, a gang in the wrong church. I hope you understand that every church is not a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were the devil, what would you do? Have you ever been so troubled that you were hungry, but you didn't want to eat. You had a pocket full of money, but you were burdened. You were concerned about a family member or a close friend or trouble in your church, in your tribe. And you, you went on a fast, not because you chose it, but it chose you. Daniel said, I ate no pleasant bread. Most of us who have lived a while, we've had this experience once or twice. I ate no pleasant bread. No celebration food. All the fancy foods that you liked, they did not appeal to you. you if you, if you ate anything, you just wanted to eat something, you, a bowl of soup, a bowl of beans and rice was just fine. You, you, you didn't feel like going to the burning rice Korean restaurant. You did not feel like going to Outback Steakhouse. You didn't feel like going to Red Lobster. And eating some shrimps, as we used to call it. 
back in the day. Give me some of those shrimps. Some of y'all don't remember that when we were uneducated. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Should we not be mourning today for our country? Should we not be mourning today because uh, of what's happening in the church? The sadness in the church, the brokenness in the church, the lack of victory, a whole bunch of showboating but a whole bunch of broken, miserable people who are not whole. Marriages, families shot to hell. Should we not be mourning over our families today? Breaking divorce records. Nearly everybody in the church has a girlfriend on the side or a boyfriend and now boyfriends having boyfriends and girlfriends having girlfriends in the choir box at the church house. Homosexuals are sitting in the pulpit. Dressed up in female clothing. Should we not be mourning? We certainly should not be laughing. Should not we put aside the pleasant bread? Should we not put aside some of the celebration? Should we not be mourning like Daniel? Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all. And you've had people, you know people who have done this. They didn't want to even get up out of the bed. They were so burdened down. They didn't even want to wash their face. They didn't even want to comb their hair, put a little grease in their hair. They didn't want to dress up. Neither did I anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. And this is part of what we call the Daniel's fast, Daniel fast. We take it oftentimes, and we go on the Daniel fast, oftentimes missing the whole meaning of the Daniel fast. We have turned it into a diet. We've turned it into a book, multiple books. But we miss that Daniel was burdened. He was concerned. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another beautiful day that you have made. And Lord, it is sad but true that the people today are more disobedient than the people back in Daniel's day. Everybody is in a rage. Men have forgotten how to be men and do not have a clue as to how to be men. Women are roaring like lions. And uh, uh, have forgotten how to be women. People are marching uh, for the wrong things and against the wrong things. They won't admit it, but they are mad with you and angry at you, and you have never done them any wrong. And so, Holy Father God, give us a burdened heart, a heart of mourning and confessing our sins, repenting, a heart that is willing to fast for the situation that we're dealing with today. A backslidden people, a people who have turned that which we used to call sin into something 
called a ministry now. It is an acceptable thing because most of us do it. Now it is acceptable, but it has never been acceptable in your sight. And even though you have been very gracious towards us, uh, Lord, we still need to confess our sins and repent. And today we're talking about the sin of gluttony. There are many other acceptable sins in the church now as well. But we are focusing in on the sin of gluttony. Uh, it is causing great damage in your church and in the ministry. And I believe that souls are being damned to hell because we're not addressing the elephant in the room, pun not intended. Nobody is preaching on it. Nobody is saying anything about it. Only a few. A video came out. As you know, Lord, this past week about a woman standing up giving her testimony in church, as used to be our custom. We don't see that much today, partly because of what she was getting ready to say when they tried to stop her. But I noticed that when they tried to stop her, she didn't have a chance because she was a skinny a woman. But the women who got up to stop her, they were heavy. All of them were fat and uh, obese uh, and uh, uh, and this is exactly, this is precisely the problem and this is across the board in all churches and the sad thing about it that you convicted me about, you brought it to my heart, was that we, we just accept it and we don't say anything about it, we're not shocked. Nobody acts like they're shocked at our rotundity. 300, 400, 500 pounds can't even get past the person in the pew. Can't get by. You got to walk around and can't get by a person in a single uh, independent freestanding chair. His back is pressed up to the other table and he can have Bob Bally get in there himself in the church, in Christian schools. And how many times we have had the situation where two fat people are trying to get past in a tight spot. It doesn't end well. And we do little giggles and little laughs and little, uh, little crazy statements like, we're gonna, so we're going to dance? And no, we're not going to dance. Let me go out and then you come by. Lord, you know, it's so sad, it's funny. And uh, you know, I didn't intend to have a moment. Oh, but it's so sad. It's funny. Have mercy upon us, Lord. And forgive us of our sin of gluttony uh, in a very, on a serious note. And help us to repent. Because these things are not so to be. It is shameful. It is wicked. It is evil. And it's embarrassing to you, to the church as a whole, and to ourselves on an individual basis, and we all know it. It's not a laughing matter at all. Even though every now and then some humor pops out, it's not a laughing matter. I believe souls can be damned to hell by disciples not being disciplined. And so Lord, I pray that you would help us to be disciples who are disciplined, where we not only say no to adultery, where we not only say no to fornication, where we not only say no to watching porn, but we say no 
unto the sin of gluttony. Crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us all. Fill us all with the power of your Holy Spirit uh, and manifest the fruit of your Holy Spirit into our lives of self-control. Uh, Lord, help us to stop eating everything in sight. We don't need it. That's the big problem right there. We just don't need all of that food. We can do quite well without it. In fact, we can do better. And so, Lord, help us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. gentlemen, during our Daniel fast, here's another thing that we ought to do along with humbling ourselves before God during this time, confessing our sins and repenting of our sins as we discussed on yesterday, if you will. And that is, we should study the Word of God. Not only do we need to get back to old-fashioned praying, but we need to get back to old-fashioned reading the Bible, the Word of God. Beloved, during his time of fasting, the prophet Daniel also studied the Scriptures. He writes in Daniel chapter 9, verses 2 and 3, I, Daniel, understood by books. You might recall, beloved, that Paul told the young preacher, give attendance to reading. Some folks are getting on President Trump because he does not read much. But we have many preachers who don't read much. If there ever was a profession, if you will, a, a calling uh, would be uh, the best way to say that. If there ever was a calling in this world that requires that you continue uh, to do, uh, to, to learn more and to gain more knowledge and to stay up to date, it would have to be the calling of a preacher. Every preacher I know has an intense interest in reading. Every preacher I know, be he a pastor or an evangelist, loves books. Loves books. After the church house, I would imagine the library or a bookstore is the, is the next best place for a preacher. For a preacher to see a book unread is like seeing a meal not eaten. Preachers love books. Every preacher I know. From the uneducated preacher to the educated preacher, they, they love books and Daniel uh, was a preacher extraordinaire. He was a prophet. He said, I, Daniel, writing in the first person, understood by books. These books are the Old Testament writings that were available at that time. He was not reading 
a Star Trek novel and trying to draw something out of that. He's not talking about those books, but the Word of God. The number of the years where of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. My God, my God, help us. And Daniel said, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Can we say that Daniel was a man who was in tune with God? Can we say that Daniel was a sincere brother? who loved the Lord and was sensitive to the things of God. Daniel availed himself of the law, the poetry and the prophet, uh, prophetic books of the Bible as he sought the Lord through prayer and fasting. While you're fasting, are you getting a good diet of the word of God? is better than bread. It will change you from the inside out. It will clean up your wicked, evil mind. It will clear out the trash and the ugliness and the wickedness of sin. The Word of God has a way to do that. Nothing will motivate you to pray more than reading the Word of God on prayer and other scripture verses as well. As a result of Daniel studying the scriptures and praying for wisdom and knowledge and insight into them, God sent an angel to give him understanding about what he had read. Daniel chapter 10 verses 12 to 14 says, Then said he, the angel, unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, thy words were heard, and I am come for or because of thy words. That ought to say something to you and to me. Don't get discouraged when you start praying and you don't see anything. As the old saints used to say, God may not come when you think he ought to come. But he's always right on time. Amen, somebody. They told the truth. I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. Thank God for the seers. I hope to God that in your church you have a seer, somebody who can see into the future for the church and for you and for your family. I hope to God that you have a pastor or somebody in your life that when they come to you with your conundrum, when they come to you with your problem, when you, when you go to them with your problem or your conundrum or your issue, you don't even have to explain it to them. They already know. You might have to give them two or three words and then they can take it from there and they got what you're talking about and they have a solution for you. And they love you and they're patient with you. And they will walk you through it. Thank God for good pastors. Thank God for good pastors' wives. Uh, one preacher said the other day, if a man is called to, uh, to the pastorate, his wife must be called too, and I believe that's a lie. But thank God for those pastors' wives who are called uh, with their husbands. That's a lethal 
abomination against Satan. Uh, however, if a wife is not called, she needs to sit down somewhere, play the piano, and be quiet and leave people's business alone. And let the God call man handle the situation. Amen, somebody. Every, every woman married to a pastor or a preacher is not a pastor's wife. In other words, she's not, she's not, she's not called to serve with him in that capacity in, in the ministry. She needs to sit down somewhere and be a good wife to that pastor or to that evangelist. But she's not called to help him a pastor the church. And, and I believe that's in most cases. Pastors, wives, what you really need to do, if you really want to help your husband, take care of him at home. Try your best. At least when you get into the car, if you can't muster it in the car, at least when you're walking through the door after your husband has preached his heart out, try to get it out of your mouth. At least under your breath. Oh, that was a good sermon. That was a good message. I know it's going to kill you, but do it. Because... There's some sisters in the church who are going to say it with a big old smile. Every pastor has those godly sisters uh, who love God, love Jesus, love the pastor, and uh, they're going to say, Pastor, great message. Pastor, you bless, bless my heart today. God really use you. Thank God for those sisters. And thank God for those brothers. But if you're not called to be a pastor's wife, and most of you are not, and you know it, half of you are called to the mall, and that's it. You're not called to be a pastor's wife, and you know it. Stay out of the ministry and be a blessing to that man. Take care of his needs. He's going to want some loving after church and a uh, shoulder rub, a great meal. Uh, he might want you to sit there with him even though you don't understand the game of football. Uh, just to make sure that he, you can find the remote control for him after he, he lets it slide down into the back of the chair. Just be there with him. Be a good wife. You're not a wife to the church, you're a wife to him. But be that as it may, Daniel was greatly concerned about his people. He had discovered from reading Jeremiah that the 70 years of exile were just about up. God showed it to him. Thank God for folk who see things ahead of time. While you're celebrating and partying and saying hallelujah, praise the Lord, he's always in. Yeah, but, uh, that's good, that's wonderful. Uh, but uh, we need to watch that devil in that corner. Thank God for the watchman. Amen, somebody. Thank God for the watchman on the wall. Thank God for the watchman in the church who look out for God's interests and look out for God's man and his family. They keep the devil out and keep the devil down. Before you uh, tackle uh, a gunman coming through the door, deacons and security people, make sure you tackle that devil through prayer because he's the worst terrorist. Have the preacher's back. Being an old man, Daniel knew he would not be making the return trek to the land of Israel. 
But he said with MLK Jr., I may not get there with you. But my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I'll be praying for you. I've been fighting for this and praying for this and almost died for this for all of these years. But I'm too old to make that trip. But I'll be praying for you. He was still concerned about his people getting back to their homeland. And he sought revelation from scripture as to how this would take place. And so, beloved, we can imagine Daniel, an elder statesman, an elder prophet extraordinaire, first of all, a man who did not compromise his principles to rise to the top, and one who had lived through the entire captivity. giving a farewell address to his people as they left Babylon. So ladies and gentlemen, allow me to bring it home for you as we talk about the acceptable Christian sin of gluttony. Dare to be a Daniel dare to stand alone as the hymn writer said during your Daniel fast spend a large portion of your time in the Word of God we may not be involved in happenings as momentous as Daniel was but there are many things that we have need to see God about in our lives and for our people, our families, our churches. If there is a temptation that we are struggling to say no to, we can take the Word of God, hide it in our hearts, study every passage of Holy Scripture regarding that sin in order to arm ourselves against the evil one, Lucifer, Satan, the devil and by the way my beloved this is what we did back in the early days of our Christian life did we not back in those days the one of the big uh, important books that every Christian would get in his or her library is a knave's topical Bible I still have I think the first one I've ever I ever owned or some type of topical Bible book where all of the topics are lined up and all of the verses regarding that topic. And oh my soul, we would read that Bible, we would read that book. And when we were facing certain temptations and dealing with cert certain issues, we would study every verse. We don't do that anymore. And some, I'm sure, have outgrown that in a good way. Uh, but some need to get back to that. Get yourself a Knaves Topical Bible. If it's still in print. I don't know if it was in print 40 some years ago, but I bought one. And there was another one edited by R.A. Torrey. It was smaller. I got that one too. Some of you young Christians need to get you one and find out God's mind on the issue that you're facing. So if you are about to get married or become a parent, you can study every passage in Holy Scripture regarding those life experiences as preparation for the future. As we have seen throughout this series, beloved, 
on gluttony. God's word speaks to every issue that man faces. During this time of fasting and prayer, seek direction from him, from God, through his word. Fill your heart and mind with the word of God. Some of you are depressed, some of you are sad, some of you are pitiful because you're filling your heart and mind with a bunch of junk. And when God wants you, and some of you really, truly should get rid of your television set. If it has control over you and you're doing such uh, time-wasting things as binging on whole series of shows and watching it in one day instead of spreading it out, uh, you need to quit and binge on the Word of God. Amen, somebody. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, today for speaking to our hearts. Helping us to understand better the real meaning behind the Daniel fast. Help us to apply the principles that we have learned and help us to obey your holy word and to move forward. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for us sake. Amen. Now ladies and gentlemen, as always, some practical information regarding the Daniel fast. Kristen Fiola, author of The Ultimate Guide to the Daniel Fast, answers some frequently asked questions regarding the Daniel Fast. Number 12, I know tea is restricted according to your list because it contains caffeine, but what about herbal tea? The main reason teas, even herbal teas, are restricted is based upon Daniel's example in the Bible and the fact that he drank only water during his fasts. For some people, having tea is a daily treat, so they may choose to give it up for a period of fasting as a sacrifice to the Lord. Perhaps this is not the case for you. And I'm in this category and drinking tea is not a treat to me, particularly tea with no sweetener whatsoever. Even natural sweetness is very, very uh, boring and very uh, painful uh, to taste the bitter green tea without stevia or honey or something. And you might choose to include teas on your fast, and that's okay. Um, but I would stick with green tea, and I didn't even think about the herbal teas, but herbal teas would be just fine as well, particularly those that will help cleanse your system out. Remember the Daniel Fast guidelines are meant to help provide boundaries However, they are not meant to cause legalism so that you are overly focused on what to eat and what not to eat. Got it? Okay, good. Number 13, can I drink juice? The recommended beverage on the Daniel Fast is simply water. You should drink it most of the time and that's what I mostly drink is water. Uh, fruit juices 100% unsweetened can be used on the uh, Daniel Fast to flavor recipes and occasionally 
as a drink occasionally. But I learned from Mrs. Thompson, the old sister in the church, that drinking juice, you know, apple juice, orange juice, grape juice, all that kind of stuff, uh, if you drink it all the time over against water, you can gain just as much weight drinking juice than eating steak. So uh, I was young when she told me that, and I didn't believe her. I thought juice was great, but I found out that you can pack on the pound with drinking juice. Be that as it may, but I don't recommend, she says, drinking a lot of fruit juice unless you're doing a juice fast. And I did some of those back in my early days and are using freshly extracted juice from a juicer. I do have one of those, uh, uh, several of those juicing machines and, uh, and all I use it for is spinach, kale, and uh, okra. And I mix that up most mornings. Number 14, what about sparkling water? Yes, you can have regular unsweetened sparkling water such as San Pellegrino or Perrier on the fast. Now in closing, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in this series as we focus on overcoming the sin of gluttony and uh, controlling ourselves, disciplining ourselves, managing our bodies as God intended. We must not lose sight of the most important part of our existence, and that is our spiritual life. Even those of you who are fit, uh, who eat right, and who exercise regularly, must still address the condition of your soul you may keep your body in perfect condition till the day you die, but you will still die. We all will die. And the only thing that will matter is the condition of your soul. Is your soul in shape? Is your soul in right standing with God? The only way to make sure of that is to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior from sin and the consequences of sin, which is hell. He alone can save your soul, put you in right standing with God, and ensure that you do not perish in that awful place called hell. Now, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Here is how you can trust Him today. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner. You have blown it, and so have I. We are all guilty before God, including Billy Graham and including the Pope, for we have broken God's laws at some point in our life, and God demands perfection and that you have broken uh, God's eternal laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have come short. We all have failed to reach the mark. Secondly, accept the fact, dear friend, that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We die physically and we die spiritually. Our body goes to the grave, our soul goes to hell to spend eternity. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now while the blood is running warm in your veins and the air is flowing through your lungs. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 
The Bible also says in Revelation 21 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is bad news, but I have some good news for you. I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you. So that you can live forever with him. All you have to do to be saved is believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose again. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul, and he will. Let's pray together. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou and you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. With those verses in mind, pray with me what is commonly called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge and I admit that I have sinned against you and that I have done evil in your sight. by nature and by choice. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I, from my heart, believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. Help me to turn from my old life and to follow you, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, allow me to say to you, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospelitesociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Dear friend, until next time, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you. Real good is my prayer.